Hello, I'm Matteo, and today I want to talk to you about a project that I've been working on, which is called the Storybook Module. Uh, this is a successor to the old CL Server Module, which allows you to put your single directory components inside of Storybook, uh, but this time the approach is radically, radically different, and it, what it will do is it will let you put any arbitrary twig inside, inside of Storybook Stories. And this is uh, an approach that is much more flexible, powerful, and it's also been vetted by the Storybook team themselves, right? So uh, this is how it works. So the first thing that I uh, will need is to do the Drupal setup. And this is easy in the way that you just go and paste these, these parameters, all of this inside of your development services YAML. So make sure that that's uh, enabled and running for you. And uh, that's it. Uh, what we're doing here is we're enabling course because uh, we will be making, sorry, Storybook will be making requests to Drupal. Uh, it will be asking for, right, uh, the user clicked on the button story, render it for me and give me the HTML. So that request needs to, needs to happen and for that we need course enabled. And also we have a bunch of settings that are just to make sure that we see uh, live results and we don't have to be clearing caches all the time. So uh, this will enable uh, the debug mode in Dweg and also in the storybook development itself, right? Uh, when you've done that, add permissions to the anonymous user for your local site to render storybook stories. Uh, otherwise, the, those requests will, will fail with a 403. So I've done all of this in my Umami side that's using ddev and now I'm ready to start running storybook. So in order to run storybook, I already uh, did this obviously, but you just run these uh, three commands here. So, uh, and this is uh, optional. The, you could avoid this, uh, but uh, basically you need to run storybook init webpack5 server. So this is the key. This is what Storybook supports in order to render server-side components. And once you've done that, you'll need to uh, make a small change in here at the top, Storybook main. Just change it so it reads uh, from your web directory. So go back. You're in the Storybook directory. So you go back and you go into the web directory and find stories.json or mdx. Everything else here is fine. It's uh, uh, by default. You don't need any additional add-ons like you used to for the CL server. Uh, it works with the native tools. So that was uh, one of the main points to, to it. So once you've done that, you'll, you'll be able to start running Storybook. That's pretty much what's here. So if you want more details on how to install Storybook and install Drupal, here's a five minute video that will walk you through everything from start to end, right? Here's another one that will help you integrate it with single directory components. And that's uh, pretty easy as we will see. So let's take a look of uh, at what you will be writing for stories. So this is pretty much it, right? Let me collapse the individual stories. So basically all the stories for a stories file will be wrapped inside the, of this new stories tag. This is something that comes with, uh, with the module. This is a dependency that I wrote. So all the Twig projects can use it, but in Drupal, uh, it will be added by default when you add the module, right? So uh, you define stories, you give it an ID, and then you pass this with and an object, a tweak object, right? And in there, we'll pass the title. And for now, we'll forget about this. And 
in between the stories and end stories, we'll have individual stories, right? Uh, let's say that we want to take a look at the no image story. So what we'll do is story an ID again with and some parameters. Here we pass the name. This is going to be surfaced in the storybook UI in the sidebar. This is what you're going to see when you when you click around the, the stories and then arcs right here inside of story. We are going to write any arbitrary twig here. Uh, in this case, I'm just including a single directory component, but we could do anything. But in real life, when you do this, when you include this in, let's say, a field template, you will be having data passed from Drupal to your template, right? How do we mock that in Storybook? How do we pass data into the template? Is by using these arcs here, right? So in here, I'm declaring a bunch of variables and I'm giving them an initial value. I say an initial value because if you do it like this, Storybook will create a form that you can change the value live inside of Storybook and see it refresh with the new data. We'll see that as well. So here I'm declaring heading, CTA text, CTA href and image, I'm setting it to an empty string. And then I'm just passing those same values. I just used the names that I know that my component use. So uh, I can simplify. If let's say this was uh, my heading, I would need to do something like this. If you find yourself writing, oops, writing this, know that you can simplify it and just have this, right? When they are exactly the same. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, doesn't have anything else. Since this is all tweak, I could do any markup that I want or even use my tweak filters or even do use things that are not tweak primitives but something that is defined by Drupal right all right see you you can you can add anything because this is just plain twig right but I'm interested in just including this component for now and that's what I will do and you can take a look at the other stories here in here I'm just including it uh, using the include version for the banner because I don't I'm not using any of the blocks there in here I'm using the embed because I'm passing the body for the banner and I'm providing some random HTML right uh, so you're running you're writing your stories as dot stories dot twig and this is the format that feels more native to developers but storybook doesn't understand that format because uh, imagine there are many many templating languages out there and Storybook doesn't support all of them, obviously, but it does support JSON. So as part of the process, you need to transform these stories that twig into JSON. And how you do that is by using Drush, right? So uh, I'm gonna do the dev Drush. Drush storybook generate all stories and it will detect stories. It will see actually that uh, they were already generated without any changes. But if I do make a change, uh, let me see something like this, then it will generate the, the file. So Remember to do that. If you forget all the time, 
do what I do and I use the watch command to run it in the background every two seconds or so and uh, it just keeps refreshing it in, in my local and since we are skipping it if nothing needs to be done there are not many resources wasted in here all right so the last thing we need to do is to see how it works the dev yarn storybook and this works because when we ran the command to install storybook it added this script in here right I didn't have to do do this it was this command that I was talking about earlier that did it so storybook should be working and in my local environment I have uh, ddev and ddev is uh, serving from this port in here and uh, this is the one that we were looking at uh, remember the no image and then the controls that we were saying uh, we can change this to anything right and this goes to assemble.org as we as we would expect etc so uh let me take a, a moment to mention if you're using ddev go to this section in the documentation uh this is in the project page linked in the project page and if you add this this is what you saw earlier if you add this and uh take a moment to uh, do all this setup it will be nice because you will serve from the same URL that you used to but in in a different port you will serve storybook and it will connect to your to your Drupal instance and yeah that's pretty much it uh, there is something else that's cool that I'd like to mention and that is the MDX format because right now we wrote our stories but now we can actually document our component and do it with the industry standard format, uh, at least for storybook, and that is MDX. Here uh, you see how I'm importing, uh, sorry, importing the story and I'm importing the code for the component, right? So I'm reading from all the files. In this case, this is the source code for the component. And in this case, this is the story. So I'm importing those inside of the MD. It's MD with extra stuff. So that's uh, MDX. And I have a console log here. Uh, as you can see, you can write uh, some JavaScript with it. Uh, because this will end up being JavaScript. So uh, basically you import the stuff and then you can render the story that you wrote for the card. So uh, this story, you can render it in here, right? So, and you can also have the code and everything's imported together and you can start documenting and saying, all right, so this is, this component it works like this and uh, add as much information as you want and of course it will also let you include the readme from your component so this is where you put everything together uh, and that's pretty much it uh, I don't want to get too much into the, the details but this is a workflow that you'll be that you'll be using once you have everything set up you write your stories in twig format and then you transform them into JSON so Storybook can understand it and you'll see them pop up inside of Storybook. That's it for me. Ta-da!